and welcome back to my channel. So before I get started with the eyes, I wanted to share with you guys a new foundation that I'm going to use for this video. It is called Maybelline Dream Velvet Foundation and it comes in 12 shades. So I'm going to give you guys my first impression of this foundation since I have never worn it yet. I'm going to apply it for the first time with you all. These were the darkest of the ones sent to me, 90, 92, 95, I think I'm probably 90. So I'm going to try that one out and hope it works. It is called Honey Beige. The other ones are called Caramel and Coconut and they are a bit darker. But I'm going to use this one and try it out and hopefully it matches. Hopefully. Maybelline also has their own blenders. It is called the Dream Blender. Oh my gosh, a trillion there. So I'm going to use the Dream Blender sponge. It's really cute and it has nice points. It's going to be good to get around this eye area and the nose area. And I like how it has a little wand for you to use it with it too. So I really love matte foundations. So I'm already assuming I'm going to love this one because I love a matte finish. Yeah, this looks like it may be my color. So I already have a primer on my face. I already moisturized and primed and I have my eyebrows done. So the only thing I'm missing as far as face is my concealer and foundation. But I'm just going to show you the foundation part since this is a new product for me. So let's see how it looks. Uh oh, is this one color? This color is actually too light for me. I'm so mad I didn't test it first. So before I wipe it all the way off, let me try 92, which is caramel. See if this one's better. And it is. So, okay, so take two. I just wiped that off. I am instead going to use 92, which is caramel. So I always apply it a little bit heavier under my eyes, and it looks like it is concealing me already very well. I'm just gonna apply it to one half of my face first so I can see the difference. Okay, so I applied it to one half of my face. I'm sure you can probably tell because this face is looking a little splotchy and I like it. I covered up my little moles on my face and get a little closer. As you can see, this eye is looking a little dark and this one is looking nice and concealed. My head isn't as shiny, it's nice and matte. I have like a light spot here that you can't tell over here. I have lots of moles underneath my eye that you can't see. You can see them over here. My nose even looks smooth, like, oh my gosh, this is actually pretty <laughs> So this is looking like it is a great option if you are looking for a drugstore foundation and you like a matte finish. It feels very lightweight and it still gives you a lot of great coverage. Sometimes it can be difficult to find a matte foundation that isn't really drying. So the fact that my face still feels like it did before, nice and moisturized, that is always a good thing because you don't want to have dry face. So I'm going to go ahead and apply it on the rest of my face and finish my face up and see how it sets because right now it hasn't really set into my skin yet. You always want to let your makeup and after you do your powder and all that set into your skin for a good 15 minutes so that your skin can warm up the product. So after I do like my concealer and my powder and stuff, it's gonna give me my really final opinion on how the foundation feels because even though you put stuff on top of your foundation, there's times where I've applied a foundation that I didn't really like even after putting all the stuff on top because the stuff, the powders didn't settle into the foundation like I wanted it to. Like it would be too oily or too dry and everything on top of it would make it drier. So that's why your foundation is always really important because it is the base of your makeup. But as of right now, my favorite thing about it is the coverage. It covered me nice and well and it still looks pretty natural. It doesn't look caked. It feels weightless. And it is a soft matte and I love a good matte foundation that still feels really hydrated and um, it's inexpensive. So <laughs> that's always good when you have an expensive, an inexpensive product that works like an expensive product. So yeah, let me finish up my face. And continue with the tutorial. 10 times out of 10, I always start with the flesh tone matte shadow to begin my blending in the crease area. Once I have that blended in, I'm going to darken up the crease with a darker brown matte shade just below where the lighter brown shade starts and going more towards my crease and lid area. Since this is kind of a smoky eye, it's okay if you kind of go down onto your lid area. You don't have to stay right into the crease. You just want them to blend from light to dark. 
every time I dip my brush back into the shadow, I always start on the outside V of the eye and then drag it over. I never start in the inside because you don't want to make this part too muddy. Next, I'm going to go even darker with this purplish shade, same palette. And I am once again starting on the outside and darkening up the crease, going in towards the center and getting it a little bit on my lid to help with the transition when I add the darker color to my lid. Now I'm reversing the steps, going back with the darker brown and the lighter brown to make sure that it's not so choppy and that it blends nicely. You just want to go in small circular motions. For my lid, I'm using Stellar by Dose of Colors. It actually has a primer on the top and on the bottom it has a pigment that matches the primer for it to stick on your lid. It's a loose pigment. So I'm going to use the primer first and I'm going to rub that onto the lid area. Just make sure you have it in all the areas on the lid that you're going to press the pigment onto. I'm going to add a little bit of powder underneath my eye to help with some of the fallout I'm going to get with the pigment. And then I'm just dipping the brush into the pigment and pressing it onto the primer. Tilting my head to the side a little bit to catch some of that fallout. Now I'm going to go back with that dark purple shade and blend this lid color into the crease. I'm just going to repeat the steps and go backwards with the dark brown shades up into the light brown so that the lid, the crease, and my brow area all blend together as good as I can get them. Now that I'm done with the top part of the eye, I'm going to move on to the lash line but first sweeping away this Sasha Buttercup powder with my MAC Mineralized Skin Finish in Dark. Now I'm adding some black eyeliner to my waterline, tight lining, adding it a little heavily because I'm about to blend it out with the purple shade that I used to darken my crease. I'm kind of connecting it to where it ends in the outer V. Then I'm just blending it out with a little pencil brush. Now since pigments and like glitters are a little bit thicker than eyeshadows and you are going to do a wing liner, it's kind of easier to use a liquid eyeliner. Sometimes I use gel first and go over with liquid, but I'm just going to use straight liquid for this one. Anytime I do a dramatic eye, I like to pair it with some layered and full lashes. So I'm going to use my Grand Glamour Lashes by Ilora and Vegas Nay. They are layered and they are thick and full just like I like them. Now I'm just going to apply some mascara. Now I'm just sweeping away any extra fallout with my powder brush. Touching up my blush and my highlights. And about to apply some lipstick. I'm going to first line them with the Ellery Pencil from Colourpop. The matte lip gloss that I'm using is from Dose of Colors and it is called Mood. And I'm making it into a little ombre with Desert Suede. So here is the final look guys. I hope you like it. It's a lot going on. I kind of like to use bold eyes and bold lips together. I know some people don't, but it's kind of my thing. Um, but either way, I hope you guys enjoyed. And my final opinion of the foundation is yes, I would try it again. I think I would probably try to mix up two different colors next time because I'm not really sure if the color I used alone matches me as perfectly as I would have liked it to. It kind of set a little bit lighter underneath all my my usual stuff that goes on top and I kind of like my foundation to be a tad, just a tad darker than my skin tone. My color is 92 but next time I would probably drop a dab of 95 in it just to make it a little bit more darker. The formula itself it kind of reminded me of whipped cream. It's a really, I guess it's a gel with 
foundation but you know how uh, whipped cream is like really thick and it looks like huge but it's so lightweight like that's what it reminded me of I thought it was gonna be kind of heavy but it's really airy actually and it came on and felt like there was nothing on I love the finish it is nice and matte and it still feels weightless and my skin doesn't feel dry I've only had it on for a couple hours but it's supposed to give you 12 hours of hydration so I guess I will find that out. So overall, I would recommend these Dream Velvet foundations. And as for the Dream Blender, if you already use drugstore blenders, this one is pretty much just the same, except it is smaller, which I like a whole lot. So if you use drugstore blenders and you know they're kind of big and, and, and fat, not only do you have a little handle, but the, the size of it helps you get around the small areas of your face, like right in the corners of your eyes, go around your eyebrows, nose, and all that. So it's good for the size. You can also use it to bake your concealer with, you know, your loose powder or, or whatnot. You can use it, you know, like a normal blender. It's just a little smaller. And um, for me, it's a little too dense. But most drugstore blenders that I know of all feel like this. So like I said, if you use drugstore blenders, you're going to like this one because it's smaller. So just test it out. It's pretty inexpensive. I'll leave all the info for it in the caption. And you guys can give it a try and tell me what you think. Other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed my review slash tutorial. I do have a complete drugstore video coming very soon where I will be only using drugstore brands. I haven't been able to do it as of yet, but I am in the midst of moving and traveling and that's one that I really want to take my time on and make it nice and special for you guys because I know you guys ask me for it all the time so I want to make sure I get all the necessary items I just haven't had a chance to do that yet but check out for that to be filmed sometime hopefully in February early March I know you're probably like why does that have to take that long but anyways guys don't forget to subscribe and follow me on Instagram at Ellery and let me know what you want to see next Mwah. smooches